Hello, we've had our first name storm and the autumnal feel to things is going to continue for a little while yet. Let's have a look at our 10 day trend. Now I'm going to briefly go over the next few days. We've covered it quite a lot in a lot of our other videos, but at the moment we do have an active jet stream running across the UK and it's the active jet that has led to Storm Agnes, a pretty deep area of low pressure that's now tracking its way northeastwards across the UK as we go through Wednesday night into Thursday, bringing some very wet, some very windy weather to many parts, gusts of over 17 miles per hour of some coastal spots. But as we go through the rest of Thursday, the worst of Storm Agnes clearing away. Still a blustery, windy day for many of us, but some decent dry, perhaps even sunny or bright spells and temperatures getting into the high teens towards the southeast, though in the blustery winds feeling markedly cooler than that. We've already got some heavy rain pushing into the west by the time that we get to Thursday afternoon, and all of that is in association with two areas of low pressure. So we have this one up towards the northwest, fairly good agreement on this one, but it's this one in the southwest which is causing us a few more problems. This has the potential to bring some heavy rain as we go through later Thursday and into Friday, and there is a bit of uncertainty as to exactly where it's going to be. Also a bit of uncertainty as to how intense it's going to be. Worth noting that Storm Agnes crossed from the southern to the northern side of the jet stream, and with some upper forcing, it was this that caused it to invigorate and intensify so much. Meanwhile, this low pressure likely to stay on the southern side and without that upper forcing, it's not expected to get as intense. But the global model, the Met Office global model does hint that it could get closer to the jet stream, so that could invigorate it a little bit more than some models want. Now, this Dalmatian plot shows possible model outputs for where the uh, low pressure is going to be centered as we go through Thursday night. This is the Met Office model, and you can see there's a fairly wide spread of potential places for that low pressure to be centered. Interesting to note that towards the northwest of the UK, that low here, also a little bit of spread here. But when we compare it to the ECMWF model, so the model for the European Center for Medium Range Weather Forecasting, yes, there's still a spread towards the northwest as to where we're going to see that low pressure centered, but it's actually in fairly good agreement with the Met Office model. A very different story for this low pressure towards the south. It keeps this low a little bit further south than the Met Office models do, and it's probably not going to be quite as intense. And so while there's the potential for maybe 30, perhaps even 40 millimetres of rain across some parts of England and Wales, perhaps in association with it, if you use the Met Office model, the ECMWF model doesn't have the rain quite as intense. All of that wet weather, though, should clear through as we go through early on Friday. And then Friday itself, particularly for England and Wales, actually turns out to be a fairly decent day. Still windy because of that low pressure towards the north across much of Scotland and plenty of showers for Scotland and Northern Ireland. But yes, for England and Wales, bright sunny skies, blustery winds and temperatures getting into the low 20s. So a touch above average for the time of year. As we go through later Friday, the weather's going to quieten down further. And that's because of this ridge of high pressure that's building. You may say this is a rinse and repeat of what happened last Friday, because yes, we had a ridge of high pressure building then. And you may remember that last Friday night was also a little chilly. And that's again what's likely to happen this coming Friday night. Here are our rural minimum temperatures. So away from the towns and cities, from top to tail of the country, we could see temperatures dipping into our low single frigors, possibly not going to get below freezing but a touch of grass frost is possible for some rural spots. And now this isn't exceptionally cold, but in fact, we've already been colder than this so far this September. However, I just want to highlight how chilly it will be compared to the nights either side of this. So these maps show our temperature anomaly maps for the nights coming up. So Thursday night, you can see temperatures compared to average will be generally a little bit above or quite a bit above in the southeast where we have those red colors. And also Saturday night, temperatures are likely to be a little bit above average for the time of year. Meanwhile, Friday night generally looks like it's going to be around or, or for many a bit below average, particularly towards the south where you can see there are some blues and across parts of Northern Ireland. So really, my point being, whilst Friday night's not going to be anything exceptional, it is going to feel markedly chillier than it will have done on Thursday night and Saturday night. So if you are heading out first thing Saturday morning, you will notice that chilly feel. Otherwise then, Saturday itself, because of that ridge of high pressure, it is going to be a largely fine settled morning at least, turning a bit wetter from the west as we go through the afternoon. Notice after a 
chilly start, temperatures still likely to get in the low 20s towards the southeast. But yes, we have some further wet weather pushing its way in from the west as we go through later Saturday and into Sunday, all due to this area of low pressure towards the northwest of the UK and associated fronts that are going to sweep in, bring some heavy rain, some blustery winds, but that whole frontal system pushes its way southeastwards as we go through Saturday into Sunday. Looking at the details for Sunday then, likely to see this band of rain across central parts first thing, gradually making its way southeastwards, breaking up as it goes, so southeastern parts won't probably see a huge amount, but turning cloudier here towards the northwest, likely to turn brighter, albeit showery, as we go through the second part of the day, as we go through the end of Sunday. But it's worth taking a look at the rainfall that we can expect through this weekend. And here are 24 hour rainfall total accumulation predictions from 12 GMT on Saturday, so 1 p.m. until 12 GMT on Sunday, so 1 p.m. to 1 p.m. And on the left hand side, you can see our UKV, so the Met Office high res model. And it's pinpointing that the highest rainfall total is likely to be across parts of southwest Scotland, northwest England, also some heavy rain for parts of Northern Ireland and Western Wales, perhaps. And here it's hinting that we could see maybe 40 to 50 millimeters of rain. Now our Met Office global model, which uses similar starting points to the high res model, understandably showing very similar areas to where the heaviest rain is going to be, doesn't have quite the high resolution that the high res model does. As a result, it's not picking out those extreme totals quite so much, but again, it just shows, yes, Southwest Scotland, Northwest England likely to see the heaviest rain. Meanwhile, if we look at the ECMWF model, it has the worst of the rain, just that little bit further northwards. So western parts of Scotland likely to bear the brunt of the wettest weather here. Still some heavy rain for more, slightly more southern parts or central parts of the UK, but not as wet as going by the Met Office models. Meanwhile, GFS is actually a bit further south than both of them. And it's not as high a res this model uh, at this stage, so it's not pinpointing as high totals. Worth noting as well that EC also isn't quite as intense as the high res model from uh, the Met Office. So just worth pointing out that there's the potential, particularly for western parts of Scotland, northwest England, we could have some pretty heavy rain as we go through this weekend. And that's quite likely, but exactly where the worst of the weather is going to be and where uh, how heavy the rain is going to be as well, there are some question marks at the moment. It's not just the rain though for Sunday, also the strong winds. It's worth noting that on Sunday we're going to see a period of spring tides, in fact the highest tides of the year. And these coincide with a period of strong winds because of that low pressure. The chart behind me shows our forecast wind speeds for a couple of places around the UK. So we have Barmouth in the western coast of Wales and then also Bangor on the eastern coast of Northern Ireland. And you can see a peak around Wednesday, Thursday in association with Storm Agnes, but then another peak on Sunday. And whilst that peak's not as high uh, as the one with Storm Agnes, it is still showing that there could be some pretty strong winds. And with those coincide with those high tides, we could see some large waves, which could lead to some minor coastal impacts, particularly around those Irish sea coasts. So worth keeping up to date with that. But let's head on to next week. After all, this is the 10 day trend. And if you do regularly watch these 10 day trends, you may have seen a chart like this in the past. It's a multi-model probabilistic pressure trend. And what it's trying to show is the percentage likelihood of seeing a certain type of pressure across the UK. Blues indicate when low pressure is more likely, reds indicate when red pr uh, high pressure is more likely. And we have different model runs, starting off with the most recent up towards the top. And what you could see is, yes, unsurprisingly, with Storm Agnes through Wednesday and Thursday, low pressure was very unlikely. Um, but then as we go through into next week, there are hints of some reds, but the percentages, you probably can't read the figures, but they're all pretty low, close to the 50-60% mark. And so really there isn't any strong sign in terms of the pressure pattern using this chart. But what I'd like to show you instead is the zonal trend, which is very sim similar chart, but instead of looking at pressure, it looks at whether it's going to be zonal or meridional flow across the UK. Remember, zonal flow is when the movement is moving along the latitudinal line, so going west to east. Uh, you can remember that because to draw a Z for zonal, you have to draw a line left to right. Uh, whereas meridional, uh, which is the opposite, is when the flow is moving north to south or south to north. Again, to draw an M, you have to draw it uh, top to bottom. 
And so what this is highlighting, the blues showing that a zonal flow is more likely. And that's the pattern as we go through much of this weekend and through much of next week. And it's not really uh, until the end of the week, uh, into the end of the week, sorry, and into the weekend where we start to lose the sign of that zonal flow and things come to a more of a neutrals phase. Uh, and so that's definitely something to just bear in mind because with the zonal flow, our weather's generally coming from the west. It's our most common pattern, but it does mean western areas are most likely to bear the brunt of the wet and perhaps windy weather. Now the other thing that we can look at is our ECMWF chart showing mean sea level pressure and on it I also have the jet stream here and to start the week, this is Monday, you can see the jet stream running across the UK so the changeable unsettled weather looks like it will continue for a little while and it's still going to have that autumnal feel to things as well but if we skip forward to Thursday and using the most uh, recent model run you can see a couple of things, the jet stream should have pushed a bit further north and there's also then high pressure building across Europe and that's likely to dominate our weather, particularly across the east southeast, and so it could turn things pretty settled and perhaps even warmer here, albeit always have to remember that towards the north northwest of the UK, something a little bit more changeable with that zonal flow that I mentioned earlier. You have to take this with a little bit of a pinch of salt though, because if we look at the same time period, but using the previous model run, it paints a very different picture. Here it now has a low pressure across the UK and the jet stream is much less defined. And so it's much less clear as to exactly what's going to happen. Worth bearing in mind, this is quite flabby low, nothing on the same scale as the intense low that Storm Agnes was, but nonetheless, it just really goes to show how different the two model runs so there is quite a bit of uncertainty as to what's going to happen particularly as we go through later next week but that's no huge surprise due to how far away it is. The other thing that I want to show you, the last chart, is our meteograms, our plots for our capital cities, looking at our temperatures, both our daytime highs in red and our overnight lows in purple. And what you can see is they're generally around or a little bit above average for the next few days, dropping down close to average as we go through next week. But if I look at Edinburgh, for example, and you can see as we go towards the end of the week and into the weekend, there's fairly good agreement, a little bit of spread, quite a bit of spread, unsurprising, it's what, 10, 11 days away, but fairly good agreement that it's more likely that temperatures are going to be a bit above average for the time of year. It's no guarantee, but yeah, signs that we could see something a little bit warmer heading our way as we go towards the end of next week and into the weekend. So just to recap, yes, as we go through next weekend, we are, next week, sorry, we are likely to get a bit of a zonal flow. So western parts likely to bear the brunt of the wettest weather, more likely to be that bit drier towards the east and southeast. And whilst it is going to stay changeable, I think we can expect some longer drier spells, the drier spells being a bit more prolonged than they have been recently, particularly as we head towards the end of the week and into the following weekend. Now, I would like to say a big thank you to Stephen Keats, our chief meteorologist who helped me put together this 10-day trend. And remember, you can see the latest weekend weather forecast on our weekend weather bulletin, which will go out on Thursday. I'll see you later.